All right, looks like we're back. Sorry about any inconvenience there. Facebook decided that it was going to download an update and there was nothing I could do about it, which is uh, one of the unfortunate aspects of using your uh, uh, cell phone as the uh, primary mechanism for recording as well. It works, but there are downsides. All right, so one of the first things I want to do is try and get some of these measuring and marking uh, paraphernalia off of the bench. And I think I can make some nice little holders for those. So, what I'm actually going to need here is um, we're going to start with the combination square. And I think what I want to do here is a nice little piece of scrap that it can rest on top of and cut a slight little mortise in here for the blade of the square to, to fall under. And so I won't need a whole heck of a lot. Let's, uh, let's move the camera so you can get a better angle here. Is that going to work for us? No, it's not. Move some other things out of the way. How's that looking? Okay. So this doesn't need to be too terribly precise. But I think we're going to leave some room. Seriously? We're having Facebook downloads and we're having phone calls from sirs in the living. Okay. And now I've got all my notifications going haywire. All right, so I'm going to want this mortise, I think, to be a bit longer than the actual blade is going to be. So let's see if we can accomplish that somewhat. But uh, I can go ahead and cut this off because I don't need this entire piece. get our mortise engage out. I do believe I have this set up for something, I just don't remember what that would be. And I'm thinking quarter inch chisel. That's probably not too much of a of an issue there, I don't think. Let's just go ahead and one. I want this to be a little bit longer than the actual blade of it. So we can have a little bit of wiggle room in there. It's always a good thing. And get approximately centered. Doesn't have to be. 100% accurate at this point. 
Just want to get the width of the chisel blade. And I could stick one point on that end, one point on this end. Get them in there nice and tight. And then tighten down our gauge. Give me trouble, I just know it. All right. And we're just going to do a quick and dirty mortise. Actually, you know what? Um, I need to also mark the reverse face so we're not uh, blowing it down at the end. This is pine, so this mortar should go really, really fast. That's, that's what I'm anticipating. I suppose I could have used the oak. I've got plenty of that left over. Almost to the end, but we still got quite a bit of depth to go. Right. 
flip it over, go from the other side, and hopefully meet somewhere in the middle. And obviously this is a uh, this is shop furniture so it doesn't need to be pretty. And it also doesn't need to be too terribly accurate because I'm not fitting a tenon into it. This is the mortise for the mortise's sake. And my chisel blade is actually twisting in here, which is slightly disconcerting. I'm guessing the, the grain is catching it a bit. There was a pretty nice sized knot, which could very easily affect this. I think I want to go this way. through already? Oh, yes I am. And I got my chisel stick. There we go.
see if we just can't clean this out a little bit now. Get out of there. <sighs> that's what it is. It's the knot that's giving me trouble. Almost got it. And there we go. Nice little tool holder for the combination square. Now we just need to figure out how we're going to get that hanging on the wall. So I've got plenty of uh, French cleat left over, so that won't be a problem. Got a little bit of a protrusion on this end. This is not cooperating too well. do us. So what I'm thinking maybe I need is a gap. What is this? There we go. It's about a quarter inch ply. We don't need an awful lot of strength on this because um, it doesn't weigh all that much. So I think uh, maybe if I just cross cut this a little bit, I'm going to say about uh, six inches. Yeah, that should do us just fine. Let's move the camera better angle here and there we go all right that's not stable enough I should put a dog hole there or something for the hold fasts. All 
That might be a useful place to have one. Let's see, how much of that do we need? Not an awful lot, I don't, don't think. Hardwood takes a little bit longer. And I can put this away. Or at least out of the way. And yeah, this procedure is actually just going to be really, really simple. Um, Maybe clean that up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's find some glue and clamps. Glue. Where do I put the glue? Make sure this fits real quick. That should be fine. And I think that should work nicely. We'll just set that aside to cure a little bit. Maybe by the end of the stream, we'll have a place where we can put our combination square so it's not on our bench anymore. So I think that's how I'm going to approach the, uh, the French cleat system here. It's just I'm going to do one holder at a time and just... Uh, not not try and be too ambitious just do one piece at a time just focus on one piece at a time and that way i don't have to you know be scrambling to get everything on the wall but in the meantime we've got other stuff to work on so let's, let's make some room for that
Pencil sharpener. Okay. That's not too worrisome. I don't care if the pencil sharpener breaks. So this is the big project. This is the spice rack that we've been working on. And I think what I'm going to attempt next is to try and get the back fitted. So I've got a number of slats right here. This is the, uh, this, this, the color that's going to be stained in the end. I'm going to fit these in the back. So just have to cross cut these to length and then I'm going to get a piece of quarter inch ply to go along the back of that. So let's get to uh, marking and cutting and actually you know what um, I might need to clean this out just a little bit extra. This these corners are not very crisp. Just make sure I have enough room for everything. I don't think this one's quite deep enough. fine-tune these rabbits just a little bit now that everything's glued up and fitted. What about down here? Looking good down here? Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. spots that I think needed to be adjusted. So, get that in there. Make a nice little nick. Okay. That's going to be in the way, isn't it? That's probably not a great angle for what you guys want to see. That square is trouble right there. No, wait a minute, that's the good square. This is the bad one. This is just quarter inch poplar, stained with a walnut looking stain. And yeah, that, that fits in fairly nicely. It's okay to have a little bit of wiggle room in there in the back. That won't be a problem because it's all going to be uh, properly fixed, nailed down, and don't think I'm going to glue the back in place, just going to nail it in place, and that should be, uh, that should be sufficient.
Now well, that is subject to change without notice to anybody. All right. And just for the sake of visibility, I'm going to put a knife wall in there because I couldn't very well see the line last time. Don't really need to do this for the um, uh, cutting ledge, so I'm not actually going to be using this so much as a knife wall, but just kind of scrape away some of the stained layer on top just to see the line a bit a bit uh, clearer so I can follow it. Because again, I'm not, uh, all of this is gonna be hiding in the rabbit so I don't really need nice crisp edges. But I would like them to be square. shooting board here. This is this is one of the reasons why I need to get some of these tools off is because I don't have room for everything. This I do not need. Set these back here I think. Don't especially think it matters which end I trim off. Although maybe it can go a bit more aggressive than normal. Let's, let's do this. tighter than I like still. Not so much worried about the uh, wood movement, at least in the in this direction because um, the tops and bottoms greens oriented the same way so it, it won't move the way it's going right now. But I will need, yeah. no, it's because I'm going to glue, I'm going to glue plywood on the back of that. So that should keep it fairly rigid, I would think. I don't know, I've never had a problem with wood movement before, so I'm just going to assume it's all going to be okay. All right.
Hopefully not use that again. And it's uh, possible that I might have too many of these slats. Hope I don't need to cut them all, because that's a lot of lumber. Let's do that one. I'm gonna purposely cut it short. And that way I'll have a bit more slack. Just want to take off a little bit of this stain. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, hold fast over there might be a pretty good idea. I think right about there. Perfect fit. Now, I can't put it there because I got the leg in the way. So I have to go at least out to here. Pretty good, pretty good, I'd say. I'll leave that for later. I'm still not entirely convinced. I like my hold fast, I like to be able to use them. I don't want my bench looking like Swiss cheese. up that way anyway, but uh, prolong it if I can. And this is pretty much the only use this chisel gets. Don't really use it for anything else. Which is why I'm totally okay with it being a cheap Buck Brothers chisel and not uh, bothering to invest in anything nicer. Nothing wrong with the Buck Brothers chisels per se. 
but you can do better. All right, and I am worried about uh, a little bit these not being completely even thickness, like from front to back. And so there's a possibility as we go down on the carcass that uh, it's going to kind of lean one way or the other. Not exactly sure how I'm going to address that if it happens. Possibly just planing everything down just a little bit. Or maybe uh, flipping back and forth, that might be a good idea. That's definitely not a good viewing angle. Let's see if we can find something a little bit more entertaining. I need to find somebody who knows a little bit about cinematography to help me out with the angles on these streams because I really have no idea what I'm doing as far as the, the cameras go. That wasn't great. Hopefully nobody will see that one. Should be okay. That should be hidden by the rabbit. thinking that uh, I should have more than enough so if I make any mistakes let's just uh, triple check this here
Yeah, no, only got uh, one spare. And I suppose I could cut these all at once, but I'm reluctant because I don't have too much spare. And I still end up, I feel that I'd still end up um, uh, having to, to fiddle with the length after the cut, so I'd rather not do that if it can be avoided. So you're going to have to bear with me on the tedious process of measuring each and every one and cutting each and every one. Couple more. Maybe. Okay. So if I can. There we go. That should keep that side from moving too much.
That's probably a bit more slop than I'd like. And this one's going to be a bit tricky. Because I'm also going to have to rip this one down a little bit. You know what? Just get rid of the stickers. This seems to be working pretty well. Um, can you even see that? Yeah. So that uh, seems to be keeping everything from moving. I suppose the bench hook would have been a good way to go too. I just don't have enough bench room at the moment while still, you know, trying to keep that thing uh, in a position where I can assemble it. See if I can't uh, illustrate. So it's got just a bit too much um, height right now, so I'm going to have to rip that uh, just a hair. And mark on this side as well. Sure, that's uh, that's pretty close. Okay. Well, worst case scenario, I do have a spare.
This will be a little bit tricky, I think. Get a piece of scrap in there, or just as a, uh, actually, you know what, let's do this. There we go. And that'll keep us from racking. Not that it's going to be a huge issue. All right, now what saw do I want to use? See this all right? You guys, let me know if you want a different angle. And I am flexible. Actually, real quick, just to illustrate. I've got um, a line sure if you can see but yeah there's a line right here on top a pencil line and let's uh, darken this in right here just a score going all the way down I'm just gonna keep on the side of that and that should give me a straight line and uh, give me the proper width I'm gonna stay on the outside of the line So I'm going to plane it uh, probably afterwards, but we keep this lower in the vise to keep it from vibrating as much. Material will get uh, we'll get through that pretty dang quick.
be able to get it through without switching sides or without flipping the workpiece if I go along like this. I'm going along the left side. Though I am in danger of smacking my tablet and that would not be good. I've got all kinds of things underneath here. It's going to stop me from pushing this over to the side out of the way. Green's going all kinds of funky directions, so I don't think it really matters which way I plan. But I do have to take more off on this side than that side. Alright, let's, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, See if it actually fits yet. Not expecting it to. side. So it fits over here, but not over here. Nice and snug. And now we need to get some quarter inch ply in here. Let's see if we can't find some of that. scenario use your scraps when you can
Now comes a really fun question of how am I actually going to cut this? Or maybe I'm not. Okay, that was convenient. <laughs> I was not actually expecting that. I guess I can just do it that way. You don't want to take any bets to see if I can do that again? I'm thinking no. It's actually kind of funny with this square. I was not expecting to. Aha! Uh -huh, did not work. a little bit stuck up on the end here. It's keeping it from fitting properly. And there is a little strip in the middle that I'm not sure if I want to be bothered with. Oh, that's not long enough. How about you? You know what, I, I think I'm going to leave it like that, and yeah, maybe we'll just, uh, we'll just glue it in place like that. Okay, let's, uh, let's mark where the ends are. And what I most definitely want to do, since I've got these to fit all nice and perfect like they are, is mark their orientation like that. Okay, and what would be nice is if I had some kind of weights to glue these uh, to, to 
hold these together while they're drying. I don't think I have anything that uh, suits that purpose. Not yet. Well, um, hmm. But I, I gotta, I gotta have these holding together. And I, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of glue, not, not a whole lot, so I, I definitely don't want any squeeze out. Um, but just a little bit of glue kind of tack these together and then I'll set it aside because it really doesn't need all that much um, uh, adherence between these slats and the plywood I don't think all right that's that shouldn't be subject to a whole lot of stress And I, I definitely want to avoid squeeze out as much as possible because I don't want it gluing to the carcass just yet. Hmm. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can't uh, pull out some ammo cans. Okay, you're going to have to bear with me, chat. So I'm going to be off screen for a moment. And again, this is not really a serious glue up by any means. Just going to try and get it to kind of tack up. And we've got the middle marked out where we're not having any plywood. And this is not working out for me. Okay. This glue bot is. Um, doesn't really put out any glue. Maybe if I cut it open a little bit wider. That might help. I'm sorry, I can't read chat from where I'm at right now. Keep it away from the seams. And hopefully this uh, is going to be strong enough to withstand the weight of the ammo cans that I'm going to put on it. Okay. I've never done anything quite like this before, so we'll be surprised together.
this is what I was intending to use the ammo cans for, but it works, so we'll go with it. Nothing's cracking. I'm not hearing anything that's giving me concern. So I'm going to assume we're going to be good to go. All right. That's uh, that's actually a bit further than I thought I was going to get on that. So let's see if we can't start maybe another project. So really, there's not much I can do until that dries. Um. Well, let's uh, let's do an experiment since I've got plenty of material to work with here, and see if we can't make ourselves a dovetail marker. Now, for those of you not familiar with dovetails, and particularly dovetail markers, let's see if we can't. Uh, Get maybe some close up here. Okay, what, what happened? What happened? Oh, we, we, we turned off the camera. Come on. Did we? Okay, are we back? I'm hoping we're back. So, these are dovetails. You've got a slight angle that you've cut into the wood, and that keeps it uh, mechanically from pulling apart, in addition to the glue that we're going to use. So you've generally got like a bit of a pitch, like a, a 1 in 7, 1 in 6, 1 in 8, maybe 1 in 9 if you, if you really want to get fancy. And I've got those pitches marked off on my bench right here. It's uh, probably a little bit hard to see from that angle, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. So this is the 1 in 8 pitch. And um, what I've been doing is just setting my bevel gauge here to that pitch and then scoring it from the bevel gauge to the, uh, the actual wood. What I'm wanting to do, hopefully, is mark that here on this piece of angle iron and then I can have it permanent. Uh, a permanent marker, a permanent gauge, with that permanent pitch. And so what I'm going to try here is, let's see, I've got my awl. I'm going to go a little bit away from the edge, so I'm just going to cut through the whole thing and scratch a line. Unfortunately, I should have done this a different way. Okay, let's see if I... We're still doing 1 and 8, right? Okay, so I also want to have it on both sides. Now you can do it so you have like one pitch on one side and one pitch on the other side and that would work just fine. But I want to have a dedicated um, 
marker for, for, for the pitch. And that way I can just uh, use the same one for both sides and don't have to like flip around. All right, and for the top, I want to do, I do want to have that square across, so. Get the square out. Unfortunately, I don't really want to be cutting this too much on my bench because I don't necessarily like the idea of having a bunch of steel filings and steel bits on my bench where I might be uh, planing later on. Let's see if we can't find something to mitigate that just a little bit. Yes, I'm using a hold fast to hold down a piece of paper. I'm pretty sure that's overkill in everyone's book. Hmm. Now I want a way to hold this a little bit higher. piece of poplar. I've got this uh, set up so that the, the line I'm cutting to is going to be vertical. That makes it a bit easier for me to work with. So I can keep the soft vertical um, a lot easier than I can keeping it at a set angle. Mm. Now the other trick is I gotta find where my hacksaw is. Wasn't actually expecting to, to get to the point where I needed other things to do. I'm going to put a new blade on this because this is just a cheap blade that came with the saw and it's been in there for years and years. I picked up these the other day when I picked up when I got bought the uh, angle iron.
want it to go on the push stroke, so just make sure you get the uh, teeth oriented the way you want them to be oriented. I've grown accustomed to doing push stroke with all of my sawing. So I, I even have my coping saw set up for a push stroke. Get this nice and tight. This is going to take a while, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not accustomed to working with metal. point I'm glad that I went with the 24 teeth, teeth, uh, tooth per inch uh, rather than the 32. <laughs> This is a workout. And yeah, unfortunately, I am getting some metal particles on my bench, which is not making me happy. Let's see if putting a little oil on this makes it work any better. Probably not. Ooh. Get a little steam going. It's actually, this is kind of working out better than I was expecting. I 
All right, and for this one, this could be tricky. So I can't really get a uh, good angle this way. Well, maybe if I flip it over. That work. I won't be able to see the line. Oh, no, no. If I do it this way. Hold on. Hold on. So. So this is the off cut, and we can see that uh, one and eight pitch right there. These were the metal filings I was trying so desperately not to have on my bench, but ended up with anyway. Too far ahead of myself, I want to sweep those off. get uh, a little bit of a different angle out here. What do we say? Ooh, that's not what I was wanting. And that's not what I'm wanting. Okay, come on. Nope, guess not. You're going to have to suffer with this angle. Sorry, folks. I did not ask you to switch that angle, sorry. There we go. What? No, no. Come on. Switch camera, there we go. All right. We had a workable angle now.
All right. Now we need to get square across the top. Which you can't really do without seeing the top. And yet, it could not last. This is not, uh, not a straight line. That is unfortunate. I might be able to get that straight with a file. That's what I'm going to end up hoping. So I can just uh, work that all out with a file or maybe sandpaper. There it is. Well, that, dear friends, is the makings of a dovetail marker, I think. I've never done this before, so I'm just kind of guessing. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that up and maybe we'll see it later on. But, um, oh, look, my overhead camera's frozen. That's awesome. Well, I think that's about a good time for me to call it quits for this stream. Do appreciate all of you joining me. 
And uh, anybody who's watching this later on on uh, YouTube or on Twitch or wherever I decide to host it, who knows? Um, feel free to join me in my live streams, future live streams on uh, twitch.tv forward slash daddy underscore war crimes. You can also follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Um, yeah. Again, thanks for joining me. Have a great day.